If you're a busy guy who follows this plan, I guarantee you'll get and stay lean in the next 90 days. My busiest clients do this to shed fat, elevate their energy, muscle and metabolism while still enjoying family dinners and work lunches. This isn't another strict fad diet like keto or carnivore and you don't need to hit the gym six days a week. There are a few crucial steps that you must do to get lean and stay lean while juggling your work family and social life. Especially this one that keeps many guys stuck in a weight plateau after they drop the initial water weight. But first things first, let's set a realistic milestone for the next 90 days. How lean can you actually get in 90 days? Almost everyone underestimates how long it takes to get lean, particularly 10% body fat or below. But if you push really, really hard, you could drop up to three pounds of fat a week, which is 1.5 kilos. However, I don't recommend doing that because it would require a highly restrictive diet and a time-sucking workout routine that would clash with a busy schedule. So that just wouldn't be sustainable long-term. However, what works well for most guys is setting a cadence of one to two pounds per week of fat loss, which is half a kilo to one kilo per week. This means you could realistically drop up to 26 pounds if you're committed, consistent, and life doesn't throw too many curveballs at you. But hey, even if you only lost half that amount, that's a huge win and far leaner than you are today. And another big win would be achieving this with a busy schedule, family priorities, and a social life. Because guys who are happy to burn off a moderate amount of body fat each week typically find it much easier to maintain beyond the 90 days. For example, since the 1st of March, my client here, Nathan, has dropped 17 pounds in 77 days by doing the plan I'm about to walk you through. But remember, it's not all about how fast you can lose weight. It's about maintaining the results that you achieve forever so that you can avoid regaining the body fat and then having to re-lose it later. And to do that, you need to actually enjoy the food you eat while burning off more body fat with an elevated metabolism, which leads us to the next step. Have you ever felt like most diets just don't work for you? Well, you probably already know that we can't out-train a bad diet. And you know the saying that abs are made in the kitchen. So we need to make sure that your diet is working for you and not against you. As I said, this isn't about hitting the gym seven days a week. Instead, a faster way to get our body into a fat loss mode is to eat less of the wrong foods, but more of the right foods. However, it actually doesn't matter what you eat if you're eating more than what your metabolism burns. We'll talk about more foods in a sec. First, we need to calculate your calorie budget. So grab your phone or your computer and head on over to tdeecalculator.net. This is a simple formula that's been around for decades. It just helps us get like an idea on a range of calories that your body is in for a maintenance range. So enter in your age, your height, and your current weight and select light exercise. Unless you are doing five workouts a week, do not choose moderate exercise because the calories can be a little bit overblown from my experience coaching guys for over seven years now. Now, once you submit that data, it's going to show you your maintenance calories, but we need to deduct 550 calories from this maintenance range to get you into a deficit, which means burning off more body fat than what you're eating. 550 calorie deduction is around about one pound of fat loss per week or half a kilo. Now, some people go way too extreme with this and try to drop it by a thousand or more, but I would only recommend increasing the deduction by a hundred or 200 at a time if you're getting like stuck in a plateau and you're not dropping more body fat consistently. And only if you can't increase your steps because it's better to increase your activity than it is to drop your food. Now, this is something that I monitor one-on-one -on -one for every client that I work with because often what gets us the first five to 10 pounds off won't get us the next five to 10 pounds off and it requires some tweaking along the way. So keep an eye on this as you're going through this 90-day plan. So this is your calorie budget. And the best way to spend this budget to stay fuller for longer, build more muscle and maintain energy is to follow this order of nutrition. Number one, think about protein first. What meat source of protein are you going to base each meal around throughout your day? Beef, chicken, fish, pork, lamb, eggs, yogurt, cottage cheese, 
whey protein. There's so many options, but think protein as number one. Two, then you want to fill up your plate or your bowl with salad or vegetables. These foods are low calorie, but high volume, meaning they're more filling and you can eat more of them without blowing out your calorie budget. Three, then you want to fill the gap with real carbohydrates, which means keeping like crackers, breads, pastas, biscuits, cookies, keeping all that to a minimum, but prioritizing potatoes, pumpkin, rice, stuff that actually fills us up and is a lower GI, which will digest for longer. Then number four, you can add in fats. The reason we put fats last is because they're not filling, but they contain a lot of calories for such a small amount. For example, one tablespoon of olive oil is equivalent to 120 calories, a lot of calories for a little amount of liquid. So just be careful of hidden fats, butters, oils, and nuts that could be blowing up your calories without you even noticing. So at the end of the day, it's best to keep it simple and eat as much food as you can that is healthy and nutritious to keep you full and energized. But I've actually covered nutrition in more detail in another video, which I will share in a second. The final piece to your nutrition is picking a meal structure. Option one, you can have three meals a day plus one snack. Option two, you can have two meals a day and two snacks. Option three, three meals a day. Now you can interchange those structures to fit your week, like maybe on a weekend, you might want to have two meals and two snacks. If you're at work, you might just want to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can interchange them provided it sticks to your calorie budget, which we already talked about a minute ago. Now, the exact foods that you eat is secondary to sticking to your budget. The budget is the most important thing. And it's also important long-term that you learn how to be flexible and not be super rigid with exact meals and eating at the exact time and keeping everything too strict. Because that way you won't get stuck on strict diets or boring meal plans and it's more sustainable because you're gonna enjoy the food that you're eating. And I don't recommend eating less than three meals because then it just becomes too difficult to achieve an optimal protein intake. For example, you may wanna have a protein shake after a workout, but on a rest day, you don't need the extra snack. And speaking of workouts, what do you actually need to do? Forget about joining a gym and expecting yourself to wake up at 4 a.m. like David Goggins and to smash out a workout seven days a week. What's easier is to start at home with the equipment that you have or spend like a hundred bucks to get a set of dumbbells, something simple like these dumbbells that are super cheap. You can get them off Amazon, which just keeps life simple, low fuss and easy to do within a busy schedule. If you do have a gym membership and you want to use it, that's cool. Go for it. Provided you can stick to three workouts a week and it's not going to clash with your schedule and consistency. Otherwise, just work out at home with basic equipment. You don't even need barbells and racks like this. I just had the space for it and I got sick of going to the gym, so I bought a small rack, barbell, plates, but this is all I have, not much. Simple is sustainable, which is why like 75% of all my clients all work out at home. We save time on travel. We don't have to wait for equipment or benches or the lap pull down, and we can multitask at home if we really need to. Now, all I ask, is that you stick to three workouts a week. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't have to go over the top, but I also don't want you to slack off and undershoot this target. And within these workouts, all I ask is that you focus on the best bang for buck exercises. That means no wasted time doing single arm concentration curls and blowing five to 10 minutes on muscles that aren't gonna stimulate your entire body. Instead, what you can do is pick four exercises that will include multiple muscle groups at the same time. And then you just improve it every week. To give you a quick example, on a Monday, you could start with lunges, followed by dumbbell incline press, followed by dumbbell bent over rows, and finish off with a standing shoulder press. Simple four exercises. You don't have to get fancy with it, but you do have to progress every week. That way, your legs, your chest, your back, your shoulders are done, and there's also some arms included on the pressing and the rolling. My little gym buddy wanted to jump into the video, so say hello, Tuka. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, you just repeat the same thing, but you switch up the exercises. So you do a different leg exercise, different chest, different back, different shoulders. You hit all the same body parts, but just different angles and exercises. And then repeat the same thing on Friday. Three workouts, full body, different angles and exercises for each body part in each workout. But here's the catch. 
every workout you have to progress with either more weight or more reps or more sets you don't have to do all at once but you have to pick one of them and make sure that every week you are progressing even by one rep because if you do the same thing as last week you're just wasting your time and you're missing out on more strength and more muscle growth. This is a problem for men over 30 when they naturally start to lose more muscle mass because losing body fat too quickly can also force the body to break down our muscle and reduce our muscle mass to use as extra fuel that we're not getting from food. This is why it is really important to maintain your muscle and strength and increase it while you're dropping body fat. Not just for the strength and metabolic benefits, but also you'll have a much nicer, V-tapered, aesthetic, athletic looking physique instead of just looking skinny and bony after losing a bunch of fat, but not having any muscle there afterwards. Ultimately, it's our muscle that gives us the shape that we want. But when it comes to your workouts, some weeks are just gonna feel difficult and that's totally normal. Most workouts, I don't really feel like doing, but we just do it anyway because we know it's gonna get the results. Like turning up to work, we don't wanna do it every day, but we do it because we know it's gonna grow our business or increase our career progression and grow our bank account. The effort is worth the reward. And Tuco agrees, the effort is worth the reward. Because you may have a bad sleep, have a stressful situation in your business or work or in your relationships, kids might be sick, or wake up screaming at 2 a.m. Life happens. So when it comes to progress in your workouts, that's why I ask just one more rep. That counts, that is progress. You don't have to be setting new world records. You just have to be beating your own personal records every single week. So make sure you write it all down, otherwise you'll forget. And if you can't hit that extra rep, you just add another set. It's that simple. But don't go backwards, make it count. Three workouts, that's all I ask. So now that you've got your calorie budget, your meal structure, and your workouts all mapped out, there's one crucial thing that'll turn your body's fat loss mode off or on without you actually realizing. You may be wondering, do I need to do any cardio? Well, no, but maybe, I'll explain. Imagine there's two guys, Adam and Bob. Both guys are 38, they both weigh 200 pounds, they are both married, have kids, and work 50 to 60 hours a week. They both commute and work in an office and take the kids to sports, take the dog for a walk, etc work around the house. So let's assume they both do about 10,000 steps per day. However, on weekends, Adam stays at home and relaxes. Maybe he catches up on some Netflix shows, does a few, you know, chats on the phone with the parents or friends, lays on the couch, you know, out the back in on the deck or in the grass on the hammock, whatever. He just chills out at home. But Bob, he gets out, takes the dog to the park, jumps on the bike, goes for a swim, um, takes the kids to the park, does active things over the weekend. At the end of the week, who's gonna burn more energy? Clearly Bob is going to. So my point is that if you're only getting 3,000 steps per day, you need to at least double or triple that. Now for some guys that is easy because they walk to the office, they walk to get coffee, walk to get lunch, go have meetings, take the dog for a walk, take the kids to sports, etc. There's all these extra things they've got to do so the steps will accumulate across the day. But if some rare reason, you just can't get off your ass every two hours and move around for five to 10 minutes, then you would need to add cardio in to keep your calorie burn consistent. Now, just to be clear, walking is not cardio unless you're jogging or power walking and just going crazy at it. But casually walking around, I don't treat that as cardio because it's not intense enough, but it does burn calories. This is why I go for like two short walks a day, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, pop in the headphones, listen to an audio podcast, and I'm listening to something interesting while also burning more energy throughout the day. And the good thing about walking, it's quick, it's easy, it doesn't get me exhausted and make me you know, feel drained and wanna go smash a bunch of food later. Say I was compared to go for a run, that would be quite draining and it's intense. I would come back hungry and be looking around for food. So keep the cardio to a minimum, but keep the walking and just casual movement, incidental movement as high as possible. But the fact is, unless you're an Uber driver or a bus driver, your life isn't that sedentary. Most people just make up lazy excuses and just don't get off their ass. So the optimal target for you is 10,000 steps per day. Anyone can do that, even with four kids, two businesses, two wives, I'm just kidding, one, one wife, and traveling overseas uh, multiple times a month. Why? Because I see my clients do this every week. And if you combine all these steps together, there is your simple 90 day plan. Go crush it. However, there are four simple steps that you can add to further optimize this 90 day plan with your diet and your training to boost your metabolism while shedding fat and building muscle. I've explained each of these four steps in this video right here, which you can easily factor into your plan and busy schedule. So go watch this video right now to make this 90 day plan even better.